and welcome to this session, which is focused around uh, your ability to amplify your pro developer skills with the Power Platform. My name is Julie Strauss. I'm a PM director on the Power Platform team. Uh, my team is driving product investments across the platform into Power Apps, Power Automate, Common Data Service for uh, three audiences, the admin, the ISV, as well as the pro developer, which is obviously the focus of this session today. Uh, I also have with me today a very good uh, friend of the Power Platform uh, from the DevDiv team. Uh, Piers, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Julie. Hey, I'm Piers. I work as a senior program manager uh, in Microsoft's developer division on .NET and Visual Studio. And my passion, obviously, is to help every developer, citizen or pro, build awesome apps. And so that's why I'm excited to be here with Julie and the Power Platform team to show how we can enable citizen and pro developers to collaborate and build awesome apps together. Fantastic. I'm glad you're here, Piers. So uh, let's dive in. Also, we have lots of content and very little time. So for questions, I highly recommend you submit them online. We have a team there ready to help you answer them as we go. So please do feel free to use that. Now, talking about the Power Platform, uh, it is really around low-code uh, capabilities for extending and customizing Office, Dynamics, as well as Azure, but in addition to that, really building standalone applications and solutions. Looking at the core services on top there, we have Power BI designed for building, uh, visualizing data, building dashboards, reports, et cetera. We have Power Apps, which is really all around app development. So uh, development on web and mobile applications, uh, they're responsive apps, they will uh, work on iOS, Android, web and Windows, obviously, without any additional efforts there. We also have Power Automate, which is all about automation. So workflow automation, UI automation, approvals, um, robotic process automation, as you hopefully heard yesterday, we have some really uh, exciting uh, announcements there where we're deepening in our engagement and investment in that space. And then also we have obviously Power uh, Virtual Agents, which is a newer service on in connection with the platform, which is designed to allow uh, the business developer or the citizen developer to create chatbots. We also have uh, some supporting services. We have AI Builder, which is like Power Virtual Agents. Uh, the effort of taking all this goodness of uh, AI in Azure and capabilities in Azure and elevating them for the citizen developer. So we have some built-in uh, modules for, for example, uh, image recognition, form processing, et cetera, that helps our services build uh, solutions. We also have data connectors. Out of the box, we have 352 connectors that citizen developers can use to build applications over uh, this uh, set of data sources. But from a pro developer perspective, we also have the ability uh, for you to create your own custom connectors. And we will be covering that today and how you can kind of use the power of that to liberate data that otherwise might be locked away. Then finally, we have the common data service. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on common data service today, but it is an area that is, can be highly interesting uh, for pro developer. Uh, common data service is really, I think of it as two pieces. You have the actual physical storage that comes natively with the platform, it's SQL database under the covers. But then in addition to that, the second part of it is really the value, high value there in terms of business applications is all the business logic that comes out of the box. We have security, we have metadata, we have schemas. So common schemas for uh, tables and entities that are common used for building business applications uh, like contact, account, lead and opportunity which you can take advantage of. So when you're building application, maybe across different departments, et cetera, aligning to this common schema is really high value in terms of ensuring uh, more easy data, data uh, transfer and use across a department. So think of that as a good way to unify your schemas. I also wanted to talk a little bit about the momentum we've had with the Power Platform uh, because we've come a long way. If you, uh, we used to be have like still a lot of enterprises building applications, but within an enterprise, it was maybe a handful of developers or app makers creating a handful of apps sharing with their department. But that has really exploded. And if you even was paying attention or following Power Platform last year at Build, you would see a few sessions. 
but now it's it's grown and there's a lot of momentum and especially if you look at the slide here we have more than 3 million active monthly developers on the platform which is huge and we've seen a growth in more than 700% in production apps alone so now we've moved from this a few apps with a few users to literally millions of makers and within enterprises we see thousands of applications with thousands of users on them so it's been it's been a, a tremendous way uh, growth and obviously thinking about audiences that also play a role there because we are starting to cater catering to different audiences as well and we'll get to that in a second so that was kind of how, where we how we got here looking forward this will just continue to grow uh, if you're looking at some of the stats from Gartner for example saying that within the ne next four years 65% uh, of all enterprise applications will be built using low code if you add to that the probably already known shortage of uh, pro developers and technical talent to build applications. You can see how this pressure and uh, uptake in the low code space, which really helps accelerate the application journey, uh, will only kind of drive and pick up momentum. So looking at this in terms of personas, if we step back, like a lot of the keynotes and talks and use cases we have been showcasing for the platform have really been around this citizen developer where you see this uh, person in the business discovering Power Apps and Power Automate, building an application and suddenly overnight get six, 800 users. And those stories do happen. They are all real and we see it. We hear from customers all the time where this is happening. However, because of that uh, quickly acceleration, we are seeing great uptake, plus we are making uh, similar investments for these two additional audiences, which is really the IT uh, developer, the IT professional, think of it as the administrator who want to set up guardrails and govern the platform, uh, gain insight into what are the different apps being created on the platform and who are using them. Uh, so we have a lot of investment going into that uh, area of the platform. And then, of course, the pro developers, which we are highly focused on, both in terms of how we integrate with Azure and uh, the developer division and the tooling, but also just in the platform itself. Um, and this is obviously where we're going to be focus focusing the rest of the session. So when we are talking about uh, the platform is for everyone, for every developer, we're not necessarily saying that every developer, including pro developer, now have to live and will only live in the Power Platform uh, writing low-code application. Actually, it's the opposite. We are working so closely across, across Microsoft to make sure that we can provide the best in-class tool for each of our personas and, and developers. So for example, if you are a pro developer and you live in VS Code, you can live in VS Code and you can develop components that help amplify the value of the Power Platform and help either yourself build applications or help citizen developers get further with their applications. The same if you are an Azure developer, you will remain an Azure developer and you can create a lot of value added services in Azure that we will help you integrate into the Power Platform to provide more power to that piece of, of the frame. And then obviously the Power Platform itself with its tooling. So if we are peeling the layer a little bit there and, and looking under the hood, uh, this is really how we look at it from a layering perspective and how these Azure and, and the Power Platform uh, cloud kind of come together. So you have the developer layer, or every developer in the top, which is really the Power Platform. Uh, we see both pro developers and citizen developers uh, working uh, with these services. Um, and then we have kind of the data layer and the Azure layer. So at the bottom, all the different data services. As I said initially, we have 300 and plus uh, connectors that we provide out of the box for you to connect to data. Uh, but there's also a range, and obviously for Azure services, we are doing a little bit extra effort to have good integration, uh, But and we are building in this integration. So the data layer is really first. We see thousands of of applications in enterprising being built over SQL database, for example. Um, and obviously deep integrations as well with Synapse and Azure uh, SQL Data Warehouse. 
<clears throat> in addition to that, there's the, the Azure services like API management, Azure functions, cognitive services, where you can build business logic as a professional developer and plug these modules and services into the Power Platform, again, to extend the value of these local uh, services. On the horizontal over there, we have Azure DevOps, where we have deep integration, making sure that you can automate your, uh, your application lifecycle management. So if we take a different pivot, the same kind of picture, uh, we can you can kind of look at it in two ways. You have the professional developer on one hand and the citizen developer on the other hand, and then DevOps underneath. And the place where these two audiences really meet and come together is around two pieces. One is custom connectors. So API and below, how do you connect data, liberate data, and surface them up inside Power Apps? And then custom controls, which is about extending the UI and up. So if citizen developers are building applications where they run out of steam with the out-of-box control, you have the power to create your own custom controls in depth. And uh, Piers will be showing a demo on this uh, in a little bit. So looking at the use cases, I'm going to skip the custom uh, connectors and uh, controls because we'll dig, dig into them in a minute. But I wanted to talk about app acceleration and innovate uh, with the out-of-box capabilities. Out-of-box capabilities is really having the opportunity to leverage mixed reality and the uh, common data service, as I already talked about. There's lots of capabilities you get for free, more or less not free, but without any work. Uh, that you can take advantage of when you're using the Power Platform. But also for app uh, acceleration, when you think about moder modernizing your applications, you have a few strategic applications you will always want to build ground up, but there's a long chain of, of applications where, for example, you have legacy systems where you just want to wrap a new UI on top. And we'll show you some of these examples as, as well. But think about it's not about all or nothing. There's a set of your applications, there's great fits for the Power Platform, which you may never be able to get to or address as it is today. So next stance is really around the custom connectors and how you can build Azure functions and surface the, them as uh, inside Power Apps to accelerate the application process. With that, uh, we will be rolling the demo. Um, this emergency response solution uh, is designed to collect data for situational awareness for hospitals. Uh, so this could be tracking any kind of scarce resource like available beds, supplies, staffing, etc. And the idea is that we use this mobile application to collect all this data to digitalize the process so that the hospitals at the end of the day can report on it and make sure that these scarce resources are deployed to the areas where it has the most benefit. So here I am in the mobile application and uh, this is anonymous data. So I am entering a Lamna Healthcare Company here in Bellevue. And as you can see here, here are all the ex activities that I can do. So pretend uh, that I am a nurse and I have the job to go and report on bed capacity to assess whether we need to um, request more bed capacity in this hospital. So I'm in the intensive care unit here and I have 40 beds. Let's say in acute care, we have 22 beds and then we have five beds uh, in the pediatric department. Now let's say I enter 5,000 beds you'll see that the application immediately responds to this request. And it tells me that I have reached my fully licensed capacity. Essentially, that means I'm not able to order any more beds. What is happening here is the application is using a function that is calling into a legacy system at uh, the regional level where we are hosting all the data which uh, determines the, uh, the license capacity for each of the facilities for each of the hospitals. And if I am already close or over uh, the limit of what my facility is licensed to have, we're simply blocking uh, the request to order more beds. 
And obviously, it's to optimize the process, making sure that facilities that can't really install them are requesting beds, etc. So it makes sure our stock is up to date and nobody is over oversubscribed. So if I go back to my five beds that I actually have, you will see the uh, user experience is unlocked again, and I can go ahead and request additional beds. This will actually take me to the real sub submission screen where I can determine exactly where the ordered bed is going to be installed. Uh, for this scenario, we don't have to go there. The idea was to show you this use of a function to go look up the capacity and either and then direct the end user experience. And so if we go into uh, VS Code, uh, you can see I have the Azure function here. It's a very simple function. All it does is that it is looking at the entitled capacity, uh, which will allow me uh, to then go and unlock this data in the legacy system. And the reason we are asking the pro developer to build a function is that this legacy system doesn't have a RESTful API. If it had a RESTful API, the citizen developer could actually relatively easy go and access the data. So this is a scenario where you kind of depend on a pro developer to make the experience more powerful. So the uh, question is, now we've built this, how do we get this uh, API in the hands of a citizen developer? Well, we do that by deploying it to Azure uh, and then convert that into a custom connector. Let's, let's take that journey. So because of the integration into Azure directly here from VS Code, I can go ahead and I can create a new function app directly from in here, which I can then deploy. So I will call this uh, bed capacity say V2, and I hit enter, and now I can go ahead and choose the region that I will go and deploy my Azure function into. Now, if I now go into Azure, I have pre-deployed a uh, function here just to save time, and you can see this uh, function is up and running. What I really want to do, I want to push this into Azure API management. Uh, here I get the opportunity to have the central location where I can govern and manage not just this API, but all of the APIs, APIs that I'm working with across my enterprise. Um, I can do caching policies, etc. If there's performance issues with this legacy API, I can do caching. So just a way of optimizing the workflow and as well as discoverability of these APIs. But what is more important, I can go ahead and I can export this API as a custom connector, which I can push directly into Power Apps and Power Automate. And this has uh, previously been a little bit of a friction for users for how do you actually connect the pro developer world with the citizen developer world. And this is a very good uh, way to do that. So as I click uh, Export, you see this uh, integration point into Power Apps. You can see the environment. So here what is happening as a developer, I'm being asked, what is the developer environment or the environment in Power Apps and Power Automate when this function should show up? And so here I can select across all the different environments that I have. I was building my app in the emergency response environment, so I'll push it in there and I will call it bed capacity v2. And as soon as I export this uh, API, it should go really quick. There you are. Now I can go into the experience of, or the maker experience of Power Apps and go and take a look at this, um, which is now a custom connector. So if I go here, you see all the different screens in my application. And if I go to data sources, you can see I have the bed capacity uh, connection here. This is actually the connection that I used as part of the end-to-end -end demo in the keynote. Uh, so that is cheating a little bit. But if I go and search for V2, here is the bed capacity uh, function that I just exported as a custom connector from API management. So very simple, just a few clicks. Uh, it's all having a really good uh, integration experience there to connect the developer and the citizen, citizen developer. Now let's go and see what it looks like when I'm binding this function to data. So this is the starting screen you saw. And where I used the function was in the bed capacity screen. And so if I click this field, uh, this was when we entered the intensive care unit bed. Every time we did a change to a field, we went up and looked inside uh, or used the Azure function 
to look up to see if we were still within capacity. So I'll go and find the property here called on change, which says every time I change this field, go and look it up. And so here's the function that I copy pasted. So it's really looking at my specific location, looking at the license entitled for this environment or for this facility and see whether or not I am within entitled capacity. That's all it takes. Very simple, but very powerful. So it's going from just letting a nurse ordering beds that he or she a week later is told that they don't have capacity or entitlement to actually order to knowing instantly whether or not they are within the capacity limit. So it really makes sure that these beds that is a scarce um, resource these days are deployed to only the locations that actually has to the capacity to receive them. So with that, you've seen the end-to-end -end, uh, starting with the experience in the app, the uh, Azure function in VS, pushed it into API management, export it as a custom connector, and then bind it to the data fields inside Power Apps. With that, let's go back to the, to the slides again. Awesome, thanks, Julie. So Julie just showed us how easy it was to build custom connectors to access ProDev APIs from within Power Apps. And with the Power Apps component framework, pro developers can extend Power Apps UI as well. I can create these controls for Power Apps from scratch using Visual Studio Code, JavaScript, and TypeScript. But one of my favorite things is the ability to leverage existing controls written for the React and Angular frameworks from within Power Apps. All the existing investments your organization has made in building controls can be leveraged inside of Power Apps as well. And one of the really cool things about leveraging React and Angular inside of Power Apps is I can also take advantage of the vast ecosystem of packages available on NPM. And these components are completely reusable across all of my applications and solution aware, so I can plug into any number of my Power Apps that I build. And the Power Apps command line interface is my partner in crime for working with Power Apps Component Framework. Using the CLI, I can build, create, debug, and publish customizations quickly and efficiently. Let's jump into a demo to see just how easy it is to create and consume custom controls with the Power Apps Component Framework. As a PM and developer division working on Visual Studio, we're envisioning a world where citizen and pro developers are complementary, and together we can achieve even more. Citizen developers can and should be able to leverage the existing contributions of professional developers within their organizations. From data sources like SQL Server or Cosmos DB to microservices to even the UI controls that power pro dev applications. I'm going to show you just how easy it is for pro devs like me to enable citizen developers in their organization to leverage the existing investments we've made and extend power apps. Let's jump into a scenario to see this in action. We've already seen the crisis communication application that enables healthcare workers to manage patient, staff, and equipment from power apps. One feature that was requested by the health staff was the ability to visualize upcoming shifts. If the citizen developers building the crisis communication app work in organizations like I frequently work with, it's likely that pro developers have already built a large collection of custom internal UI controls that are used throughout applications built by pro developers. Luckily, in this case, the pro developers in our organization have already built an excellent calendar control. How can we expose that control to our citizen developers inside of Power Apps? With the Power Apps Component Framework, I can author custom components for consumption inside of Power Apps. I can write custom components directly for Power Apps from scratch, but one of my favorite features is the ability to leverage existing controls. Here I am inside of Visual Studio Code, uh, where I've created a simple calendar control using React and a node module that I've imported. Using the Power App CLI, I can quickly generate a scaffolding project that contains the code that's going to wrap this custom control, uh, be it vanilla HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, or controls from frameworks such as Angular or React, as I've done here. There are two parts to defining a custom control in Power Apps. Both are really, really easy. First, defining some metadata about my control, such as the name, description, and some input values that are going to show to the citizen developer when they use this control in Power Apps. Next, I just need to add a few lines of code to wire up my custom control that I've written in React to Power Apps. As you can see here, I've managed to do that in less than 50 lines of code, most of it being boilerplate. With the Power Apps component framework, I can debug my component locally to ensure it works before publishing up to Power Apps. Inside of Visual Studio Code, I'll hit the debug button, and the Power Apps component framework test environment launches to enable me to test my application locally. As you can see, the week starts on property that I defined in my control manifest is exposed here, and the day of the week is currently Monday that we're starting on. But what if I wanted to set this to Sunday? I can come inside of my 
code inside of Visual Studio Code, and just like any other code I would write in VS Code, I can set a breakpoint. I'll come back over to my test environment, and I'll change this value to zero. And as you can see, Visual Studio Code debugger populates with information about my variables, call stack, breakpoints, etc. And I can actually come in and hover over values to see what that looks like. And just like any other debugging operation, I can continue onwards, and I can see that now my day of the week is set to Saturday. As my control evolves, I'm going to want to enable a CI CD pipeline for my PCF controls, just like any other code I would write as a pro developer. With GitHub, I can store all of my controls in a repository that's going to enable me to track my changes and collaborate on code with others inside of my organization. And now with GitHub Actions, I can make it really easy to automate my workflows for my PCF controls, just as I would for any professional developer code. In this case, when I push an update to my repository that contains my Power Apps component framework controls, a new build of my solution is automatically built with continuous integration and can be published to my environment for consumption by citizen developers. And just like any con other control in Power Apps, I can once my control has been published to my environment, I can consume this control just like any other Power Apps control from the Insert tab. As you can see here now, I have a Code Components tab inside of the Insert tab. I can select the calendar just like any other control, resize it just like any other control, and as we defined in our manifest, I can actually come in and I can change properties. So you can see the week starts on Monday. Whatever I wanted to change that to Sunday, I can come in here and do that, and the control updates in real time. With the Power Apps Component Framework, we just saw how easy it was for pro developers to use Visual Studio Code and full application lifecycle management for my controls with GitHub and GitHub Actions to enable limitless possibilities for authoring UIs inside of Power Apps. Thank you. Fantastic demo. Thank you, Pierce. I love it. I uh, hope you're all inspired to go and create uh, custom components. So I wanted to just step back a little bit and show you the full extensibility model. We really focused about how you can extend kind of access to data, liberating data, as well as how you can customize the UI. But these are really only two of the pieces. You can extend everywhere in the Power Platform. Uh, so I do encourage you to go take a look at the resources we have available. You can build the whole new UIs, business logic with plugins, etc. There's a lot of richness in the platform outside what we have shown. Just to summarize what we've been through today, really looking at what are the capabilities and how is it that we can help you amplify your skills by creating building blocks, feeding into the Power Platform, either for yourself to continue the journey of building apps in Power Platform or by collaborating with your citizen developers. So with that, uh, we have a parting slide with good resources, free developer division, uh, um, edition. If you have not yet played with Power Apps, go visit the forum to continue to ask questions. Uh, but with that, I will leave this on the slide and I think we, we need to wrap up. But Pierre, I'm wondering if there's a single question that we can wrap up with that has been asked by the audience. I think there is a good one for Piers here. Uh, Piers, in terms of pro code, which frameworks are supported in conjunction with Power Apps? Is Xamarin or React Native possible? Hey, great question. Yeah, one of the things I really like about Power Apps is I can take Power Apps wherever my business needs Power Apps to go. And so I can take my Power App, if I build a Power App, I can embed that in a Xamarin application, React Native, uh, any web application, any pro dev application, Power Apps can go there. And I've seen some great use cases of uh, customers combining their pro dev applications uh, by embedding power applications. Uh, and so you can also use something called the uh, Canvas Apps Embedding SDK. So certainly you can just embed that iframe inside of that Xamarin or React Native application. But by using this SDK, you can do some really cool things like flow authentication from your ProDev application to the Power App without requiring the user to re-authenticate. So there's some really, really awesome resources on the Power Apps uh, developer portal, which you can see a link to here, and you'll have a link in the slides. Go check that out. Go check the embedding SDK out and Power Apps can go wherever you need it to go. Fantastic. And I think that all oh, that sums it up. Uh, we do thank you for your time. Thanks for tuning in to Virtual Build. Uh, please keep engaging and go to the forum and ask questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you.